Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. I was perusing the internet like I usually do, looking at watch articles, and I bumped into a watch article that obviously was pretty important to a guy who talks about pocket watches. I also had a couple friends who pretty much said, hey, did you see that article? Go check it out. So today, we're gonna check out 30 best pocket watches at every price point for 2023 by wristenthusiast.com. Let's see if I agree with their opinions, and maybe I have some of my own. Pocket watch time. I've got loads of pocket watches. I collect pocket watches. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. While I was perusing the internet last week, I bumped into an article called The 30 Best Pocket Watches of 2023 for Every Price Range from wristenthusiast.com. Let's take a look at their list, see if we agree with it, and see if we've got anything we can add to it. This is actually the first time that I've seen this list. So we're gonna kind of go through it and see it at the same time, together. Obviously from the title, those are some pretty heavy hitters. So I'm really kind of curious where they're gonna find 30 watches. I don't know if these are all current production models. I don't know if they're going vintage. So I'm kind of curious to see where they're going. So as I sort of pan down the screen, I see the first one that they're talking about is the Beauvais. And you know, Ah, what can you really say about the Beauvais? I mean, it's an absolutely gorgeous pocket watch slash wrist watch. It's kind of a conversion. Speaking of conversions, I'm wearing my Vortic Beautiful Bridge conversion. And I really wonder if Vortic's gonna be on this list. But uh, back to the Beauvais, you know, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely an amazing watch. You can't really say too much bad about it. It does come at a hefty price tag though, $64,000. So I guess you really kind of have to like it. For me, it's a little too much. It's a little too uh, avant-garde. It's not really my style, but I definitely appreciate the watch. It's just probably not for me. In terms of being on this list, yeah, I think it deserves to be on this list. I kind of knew this next one was coming. So this is the Hamilton Reintroduction Railway Pocket Watch. So I think this just came out last year or the year before. And I'm kind of upset at this choice because this watch by the new Hamilton watch company, the Swiss version, pretty much made a recreation of their American icon and for some odd reason tripled the price. So for $1,500, well, $1,400, you can buy a stainless steel pocket watch with an ETA movement in it, and I have no idea why they're charging so much. It's absurd. So instead, you could buy an absolutely iconic, true American Hamilton watch in a classic Goldfield case for probably a third to half that price in excellent condition. So I just, I just don't get it. So Hamilton, I'm, proud of you for making a new watch, but I'm really disappointed in you for making a watch way over the price point that it should be. Okay, moving on up the list. I don't understand this one at all. I guess uh, Tissot makes a pocket watch. Um, I've never actually seen this pocket watch, so I don't really have too much to say. I'll probably have to do a little research on it. But looking at it right now, it looks like a pretty standard everyday pocket watch. I'm sure it has a Tissot movement in it. It's Swiss, it's probably decent quality. The price point's about $1,000. So, you know, it's not a complete negative, but at the same time for $1,000, I would probably buy something different than a Tissot pocket watch. In the grand scheme of vintage pocket watches, for $1,000, you can buy something really spectacular. And unless I see something else in my research on this model, it doesn't really look that spectacular. Okay, the next one is, I guess, a recreation that I didn't know they made either. So the original watch I'm very familiar with. This is a ball psychometer. 
and uh, some people call it a seco meter so i'm not really sure what the correct pronunciation is but the idea is instead of having a running seconds hand it has a running seconds disc they're kind of neat actually this looks like a recreation of a classic the classic was actually a very small kind of dainty pocket watch and from what i can see of this watch it kind of looks like an abomination i actually know about this recreation a bit because i've seen someone write an article on it and i'll have to find that article but similarly they are not impressed because it's a large watch with a very very tiny wristwatch movement in it and supposedly it doesn't even live up to its reputation railroad grade pocket watches had to be very reliable very accurate they had to have a certain number of jewels and this is a very cheap alternative that does not have the classic quality of the original so for a price point it says of about eight hundred dollars here it's probably more expensive than it should be but i do like the secometer you know look so i like the look of it but similarly i would buy the classic so you could probably buy the classic for four or five hundred dollars and you'd actually have a high grade movement versus this kind of not so high grade movement and it would obviously have more history and story to it as well Ooh, no okay the next one is made by the sterling brand which is the sterling that's spelled funny and the part that caught my eye first about this while panning up on my ipad was why the heck do they have the name sterling embossed in huge text at the top of this case Ugh, that's gross there's no reason for that um blanc pan i'm looking at you you do that to the case sides of your watches on some models and it's ridiculous but at least you're a high quality brand uh sterling you're not so nobody wants to advertise that they're wearing a sterling you know this looks like a relatively cheap skeletonized pocket watch and you no know, uh, the case is actually pretty cool except for you putting your big name on there i kind of like the big bold bow of the uh the case you know it's not that bad looking it just is made by a company that i know doesn't make very good watches so looking at the price point though it's 250 bucks so i mean at least sterling i'll give you credit you make a cheap watch but at least you priced it cheaply so i guess i'm not too mad at you except I'm still mad at you for putting your name so emboldedly on the top. Oh, okay, now they're hitting us with a big heavy hitter. So this, of course, is the Omega. I can't say much bad about this watch. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's $110,000, so it better be gorgeous. Probably my favorite feature of the entire watch is actually the bow that's shaped like an Omega symbol. I think that's just so clever and classy for an Omega pocket watch. This is actually a, uh, a stopwatch chronometer too, so it actually has some extra features in there. I think it's a pretty cool watch. They kind of bested themselves this year, and I guess they didn't have time to rewrite it in this article because one of the new minute repeater versions is very similar to this watch. And, uh, well, it's up the prices now because I think that one's almost half a million dollars. So, but very beautiful watch, very beautiful movement. Definitely, you know, nothing bad to say about that watch. Way over the uh, price tag that my wife would ever allow me to spend on a watch. So it will never be in my collection. But anyone who owns it, you are a lucky, lucky person. Um, next on the list, it looks like we've got a relatively common uh, Patek Philippe pocket watch so you know i'm not disappointed with this patek philippe obviously is a really great watch manufacturer they've made wrist watches and pocket watches for decades uh, this looks like a newer model you know same deal would you buy newer would you buy vintage for this price i would buy vintage because it looks like this new model goes for about forty three thousand dollars which you can pick up an absolutely gorgeous patek you know vintage model for probably ten thousand dollars in a gold case you could probably get a minute repeater for twenty thousand so you know this is a regular standard movement for forty 
3000, I would go vintage and get something really stellar. But I'm not mad at it. You know, Patek still makes pocket watches, which, you know, is very noble of them. I would just choose vintage over this new one. Oh, okay, this looked like a gag. So sadly, it's not. I've never heard of Bomberg, but uh, it looks like they've made a conversion watch that has a pocket watch kind of ability to it. So it looks like you've got a watch that can pop out of it and turn it into a pocket watch. I'm not gonna say much about it because it's so ugly that it looks like a child's toy. It's about $1,300, which means it's the most expensive child's toy ever, and I do not recommend it to any man, woman, and or child. Now this, of course, is gonna be a fan favorite. The Urwerk pocket watch. You know, Urwerk makes absolutely wild watches, and they make one wild pocket watch. The case shape I think is pretty neat. It's kind of an elongated, you know, curved rectangle. And, you know, it has the wandering hour complication very common with Urwerk. You know, it's an absolutely amazing piece of technology, kind of cool, way too expensive. It's $400,000. So if you can afford that, congratulations. Obviously this is never going to be seen by me or worn by me, but you know, I applaud them for making a pretty cool pocket watch. Uh, probably my favorite one that I've bumped into so far. This is the Cartier. So Cartier, a mysterious tourbillon. So just like their Cartier watches, they do like to do mystery hands or mystery dials. And in this case, they have a mystery tourbillon. So there's a see-through area of the case front and case back where you have a tourbillon and you get to see it in all of its majesty. It looks like it's got a neat enamel coat to it, which I don't know if I've ever seen that part, which is giving it its purple color, which once again is just kind of fun. So absolutely gorgeous. Uh, probably my favorite of this list so far. $360,000 price tag. Uh, it's not going to be once again added to my collection or anybody else that I know collection anytime soon, but really awesome, amazing piece of uh, technology and just gorgeous. So well done Cartier. I'm not familiar with uh, this watch, but I am familiar obviously with the brand. So Parmigiani Florier, it looks like they've made a pocket watch. I'll have to do a little bit more research on this. I had to go onto the internet for this one because they don't even have any pictures. The only picture included in this article is of the case, which, you know, has an enamel coat to it, which is pretty cool. And it's actually pretty hard to find even photos of the actual watch and movement on the Parmigiani Florier website. But alas, I found them. And it's pretty cool. The movement's gorgeous. The dial is black, which is kind of unexpected. But it's a watch they don't currently sell anymore, and they estimate that it's worth seven figures. So obviously, once again, a little pricey, Probably not worth that premium in my opinion, but you know, it's a very beautiful watch by a good manufacturer, so I'm not mad at it being on this list. You will now hear words that have never come out of my mouth before. This Jacob & Co. is beautiful. I am definitely not a fan of the Jacob & Company. They usually make gaudy watches that are just disgusting. Don't get me wrong, they might have some good tech in there because they do do some nice engineering feats and all of that, but their watches are usually gross. This watch is not gross, it's actually gorgeous. Congratulations, you deserve this list and that is a gorgeous pocket watch. It's $107,000, so you know I guess everybody save up for it. You'll need it. <laughs> Oh, I'm disappointed that they put this on there. Okay, this is a, uh, a Teddy Bulbasaur Flex. This so does not deserve to be on there, and that is the Code 41 table clock pocket watch garbage that they released about a year ago. And, you know, I, I know they're just trying to be inclusive and throw everybody in this list, but uh, this does not belong. It's 10 grand. It looks like a child's toy. I'm not impressed. I'm a bit unimpressed that this made the list. 
you know, you don't have to include everybody. You know, it's a, it's a list. First place deserves first place and last place deserves to not be on the list. So this is probably the last place and I'm not a fan. Okay, I might have to apologize to Code 41. They might not be the worst. I don't know much about this. I'm gonna to have to do a little research, but this looks pretty bad. It seems they don't even sell this watch anymore. It seems it's a digital watch and the reviews on Amazon where you could buy it are not good. So how did this watch make it on the list? Your guess is as good as mine. All right, they're doing it again. Teddy Balbasar moment, putting all watches of all price points on here just for the sake of doing it. I've never heard of the Gotham Railway Classic, but here it is. It just looks like a standard wannabe railroad pocket watch by a brand that probably didn't exist back then. And it's priced at a very modest 110 bucks. So it's probably quartz, but I don't know enough about this brand or this company to really know, but I mean, I can't be mad at them for the price. For 110 bucks, you could wear a pocket watch and you could clunk it around and not really care if you did any damage to it. So, you know, it's not the worst watch in the world, but kind of boring, kind of plain, and I don't really see why it deserves any honor on a best pocket watch list. Tissot making a second appearance. So this is the Tissot Lepine mechanical. Once again, I've never heard of it. Tissot makes wristwatches, and I didn't even really know they made pocket watches, so I'll have to do a little research on this one, but first impressions, it looks pretty plain. You know, it has more of a decorative dial than the previous version, and it has more decorative hands, but it doesn't really look like a very impressive watch to me, and for $511, I would probably buy something vintage because you can get a lot of pocket watch for $511. All right, we have a super big hitter. So we have a Breguet Grand Complication. And this particular Grand Complication is a minute repeater and a tourbillon. So obviously it's gorgeous. It's a million dollars, definitely top of the list. Uh, can't say anything bad about a Breguet Minute repeater tourbillon, beautiful. Well, Longines has come back into wristwatch talks due to a couple new releases in the last year or two. I didn't really know that they had pocket watches, but it turns out they have a heritage range of pocket watches, and for some odd reason, they're almost five grand. So, you know, I know they make nice watches. I don't know anything about this particular pocket watch, but I will tell you five grand for a non-precious metal pocket watch is way too much. So, you know, it might be great, might be a good brand, might be a good movement. It's definitely overpriced. Um, kind of rinse and repeat, the Frederic Constant makes a pocket watch. And same idea, they make good movements, they make good watches. This is a $4,000 pocket watch, so for being what it is, it's probably a little too plain, a little too boring, but uh, I would spend $4,000 somewhere else and get something really magical. And Audemars Piguet has made the list. They have a $1 million complication on there, and I'm sure it's absolutely gorgeous. Audemars Piguet actually makes another fun watch in a pocket watch form that I think is really neat. We'll see if it's on the list, and if it's not, I'll highlight it at the end. Okay, we have a Bulova making the list. It's a $95 Bulova, so, you know, I, I can't really go into too much detail on that. Uh, $95 Bulova, it's probably a quartz. It's just a, a toy watch on a pocket watch chain, you know, once again, if you just want to have a pocket watch for the sake of a pocket watch and you don't have to worry about it, you know, $95, you, you can't go wrong with that price point, but the watch itself is probably crap. Oh, now they're coming to one of my absolute favorites. So it is the Panerai Ceramica pocket watch. It's also by a tourbillon. But uh, this is probably one of my favorite complicated pocket watches because I'm a materials guy. If you've watched my channel and you've seen my collection, I love watches of weird metals and materials. 
you know, I've never heard of anybody making a ceramic pocket watch before. So this is 100% a watch that I would love to own, but it's $180,000. So unless all of a sudden my uh, AdSense YouTube money starts rolling in, there is no future of this $180,000 pocket watch in my future, but absolutely gorgeous, just really cool. I applaud Panerai for making such a unique watch in such a unique material. So cool, love it. Google some videos about this one. It's really neat to see. Um, I don't really have anything bad and or good to say about this one. It looks like uh, Piaget made a pocket watch and it's an antiplano, which means it's probably pretty thin but it's $27,000 and it looks like a pretty plain little pocket watch. So great brand, probably a great movement, price point way higher than it should be. I mean, it is gold, so you know there is a little price premium there, but probably at half the cost, that might be a watch that would be sort of a beautiful dress pocket watch, but probably a little overpriced and a little plain for me. I I think I've seen this pocket watch on Amazon before. So it's a brand called Mundane, which I think that has another vocabulary word. Probably not a good name. But uh, this watch costs about $215. I actually really like the second sand. It has a nice red lollipop second sand. So though the watch itself is, you know, inexpensive, it's good looking. It's kind of a tough rugged looking pocket watch with a fun second hand. So, you know, once again, I don't know if it belongs on the top 30 list of pocket watches, but I actually do kind of like it and the price is great. So of all the inexpensive choices so far, this one is my pick for the inexpensive. Oh. I didn't know Bell & Ross made a pocket watch, but uh, Bell & Ross, a brand and company that most people know about in the watch world. You know, they've been around for, you know, long enough. They make military style watches and I guess they make a military pocket watch. Price point is about the price of their normal wrist watches. It's $3,000. So I don't know what movement it is. Maybe I can do a little research and find that. But uh, all in all, you know, it's, it's a Bell & Ross. It's $3,000. It's kind of aviator in styled. You know, I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. This watch, I'm just confused. So I've never heard of Rapport London, but this looks like a Alibaba Express pocket watch, but for some odd reason, it's 550 bucks. Um, just say no. I was expecting a watch similar to this. I didn't know it would be necessarily this one, but uh, Jacques Dro makes very, very complicated, fancy pocket watches with a lot of enamel work, sometimes with an automaton. It looks like this one's a minute repeater. You know, it's $1.1 million, so it's a very expensive piece, but you know, I'm sure it's gorgeous, I'm sure it's beautiful, not my cup of tea, but definitely, you know, they make a pocket watch that costs over a million dollars and it's beautiful, you know, deserves to be on the list. Maybe not my top 30, but you know, a pretty special piece. Similarly, it looks like another Alibaba Express kind of watch. It's a very cheap looking skeletonized movement. It's about $500 from the Jean-Pierre watch brand, which I've never heard of. So I don't really have anything good or bad to say about it besides $500, you can spend that much better somewhere else. So don't do it. Ooh, now this is a beautiful watch. So. A lot of people make fun of brands that are fashion brands that make watches, but remember Cartier was a fashion brand that made watches and now they're more and more popular. Guess what? Chanel is a fashion brand that makes watches and they make some pretty beautiful watches sometimes. This particular Chanel pocket watch I think is absolutely gorgeous. $800,000 gorgeous? Probably not. But definitely a beautiful timepiece and worthy of being on this list. Breguet makes a second coming. This is the Breguet Marie Antoinette pocket watch. And it is, wow. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I do know that it is an absolute monster and a grand complication. I 
can't even tell you how much this thing costs, but I'm sure you would have to sell both your kidneys and probably a liver and maybe even your brain to get this one because it's amazing. So, you know, definitely deserves to be on this list. I, you know, it's, it's made by a, a, a legendary company. It's a legendary watch. Pretty neat. Oh, and that's it. I didn't even realize we went through 30 that fast, but uh, all right, let's see. What is not on that list? Well, obviously being an American pocket watch collector, the thing that I'm kind of most disappointed is that they didn't cover anything vintage. So, you know, they had a Hamilton on there from the new Hamilton company, but you know, they made pocket watches that really aren't that old and, you know, mechanically are pretty sound from, you know, the Elgin, Waltham and Hamilton companies. So, you know, could they have put a somewhat neo vintage version of one of those pocket watches on this list? They probably could have. And some of those watches are pretty amazing. I'll show a couple here. An icon from the Waltham watch company is the model 1872. And the American watch co grade is one of the classics. I have a similar version, which is the American watch co grade of the model 1888. The damaskining is similar. The plate structure is a little bit different, but all in all, you can see the absolute beauty and craftsmanship of this model. Speaking of the Hamilton company, I think the 992B deserves some credit. Hamilton came out with their new version. This is the equivalent of what the old version would be. And looking at it, you know, it's a tough, beautiful watch, beautiful plates, beautiful pattern, damaskining. It's, it's just a gorgeous watch. This probably deserves to be in the top 30. Something you won't hear me say very often, Richard Mill makes an awesome watch. They actually make a pocket watch and though it's a brick, it's pretty cool. So I'm kind of surprised that the Richard Mill pocket watch didn't make it on this list. As popular as the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak is, I'm kind of surprised the Royal Oak pocket watch didn't make it on the list. Pretty campy, pretty catchy, pretty cliche, but it's kind of a fun watch. So when I see these come up to auction every once in a while, I always think to myself, man, wouldn't that be funny? And for all the Rolex lovers out there, there's actually a Rolex that I really, really love. It's the Prince Imperial. This is a regulator style pocket watch that came in different shapes. I prefer the round, but it came in a very neat trapezoidal type shape. What's really, really cool about this watch to me is the movement. The movement has a balance wheel cover that I've never seen on a pocket watch before. As far as I can tell, I think this movement was made by Egler, which of course was then bought by Rolex so that Rolex could tell everyone that they're in-house. So technically, is this an in-house Rolex pocket watch? So there you go. There's my take on their list and me adding a couple to the list that they didn't talk about. So I hope you enjoyed this little fun video on pocket watches and talking pocket watches. Once again, if you ever have any questions about pocket watches, leave one in the comment. You can email me from my Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to Pocket Watch Time. Pocket Watch Time. I have lots of reviews on watches and on pocket watches. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.